Hello, sixth graders. In this video, I will be talking about how the sun's energy gets to Earth and warms us up. So let's review. You learned in the content station that all objects are made of tiny bits of matter called particles. They're also called atoms and they're also called molecules. Regardless of what you call them, they are all in constant motion. For example, this is showing us a balloon that is filled with air molecules, and these molecules are in constant motion. When objects are colder, the molecules making up the object are moving slower. When objects are warmer, it is because the molecules making up the object are moving faster. So if we take our air example again, air, whether it is cold or hot, is still made up of the same matter. It's just that cold air is made up of molecules that are moving slower, and hot air is made up of molecules that are moving faster. In this diagram, you can see that the cold air, the molecules are closer together, and in the hot air, they're further apart. This is kind of a natural thing that happens when molecules move faster or slower relative to each other. We'll learn more about that later. But what else does it mean? Well, it means that warmer objects have more kinetic energy, cooler objects have less kinetic energy. And if we think about that, well, where does the energy required to warm up the Earth come from in the first place? And the short answer is radiation. So let's begin this discussion of radiation by thinking about the sun. The sun produces energy through a process known as nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is where really small particles that are inside the sun combine to produce bigger particles. And in this process, a lot of energy is released. This energy, known as solar energy, also as electromagnetic radiation, will travel as a wave through space, but it fades over a distance. So this is kind of like sound. Sound travels as a wave and fades over a distance. But unlike sound, electromagnetic radiation or solar energy travels as a wave that does not need matter. And that is why it can travel through space. This wave is actually made up of many things. It's made up of visible light, infrared uh, radiation, x-rays, and UV light. So what are those? Well, visible light is the light that we see. Infrared radiation is the part of the wave that ends up heating up objects. X-rays have a lot of energy. Um, luckily, we don't get a lot of those x-rays on Earth. And UV rays are the kind of light wave that is responsible for giving us a sunburn. This is why we need to wear sunscreen when we're out in the sun for prolonged amounts of time. And when we're talking about these different components that are in solar energy or this electromagnetic radiation, it's because of the wave. So the waves that come from the sun that result from the energy of nuclear fusion come in different wavelengths or different frequencies. When the frequency is high, there is a lot of energy. When the frequency is low, there is less energy. Notice that x-rays of the electromagnetic waves that are coming off of the sun, x-rays have the highest energy. Infrared has the lowest amount of energy. Nonetheless, the UV waves are responsible for causing sunburns. The visible light waves, which I've colored in as a rainbow there, those are responsible for the light that we see. And the infrared waves are the waves that are responsible for heating up our Earth. Now, these waves have to travel a long distance. They actually travel 93 million miles 
before they reach earth. And a lot of that energy is lost as it dissipates in space. 63 million watts of energy per square meter are produced right at the surface of the sun. So right where that fusion has happened, there's 63 million watts per square meter. By the time it reaches our outer atmosphere, luckily, the energy has dissipated to only 1,370 watts per meter squared. But as this light is hitting our atmosphere, notice our atmosphere, luckily, um, reflects the x-rays. So those really don't even enter the atmosphere. The visible infrared and UV waves, however, are able to get through the atmosphere and come down to Earth. Now, if we were to zoom in on the land on Earth, we would see that this land is made up of a bunch of particles, and these particles are in motion. Warmer particles move faster, cooler particles move slower. When the molecules are hit by the infrared radiation or the infrared wave, the energy of the wave is transferred to the molecules. So these molecules hit, or hit by rather, the infrared rays, causing them to speed up. They have more energy, and that increases their temperature. This kind of energy transfer is called radiation. Radiation is energy transfer that happens through space. It does not require matter. It does not require medium. And the Earth's surface molecules continue to move faster and faster and warm up more and more as the day goes on and more and more time is spent being hit by these infrared rays.